Welcome, I am Dennis Mabuka, and in this video, we'll be making some shiny, techy-looking crypto coins. And this video isn't really complicated in terms of the modeling or the texturing, but I think there's some neat tricks in there in the process of making this that are worth putting inside a tutorial. As usual, you can download a free blend file. I'll be giving out the one with the Ethereum coin. And you can download it on Gumroad if you want to dissect and see how I went about setting up maybe the lighting and all the other stuff in the scene. There are also a few announcements that the guys on the Gumroad mailing lists have been getting. So if while you're there downloading the blend file, feel free to join the mailing list. And some of those announcements are later on at the end of this video. So with that said, let's just see how we get this done. I started out by designing the textures of the coins inside Inkscape. And Inkscape is really, really dope for this because the vectors will allow us to do some really cool things uh, later on that using something like Photoshop or wouldn't allow us to do. And you're going to see that a bit later on in the video. And I'm also designing them in grayscale so that it's going to give us a lot more flexibility in playing around with the colors once we take these textures into Blender. Something else I was also careful to do was not to bake in the logo of whichever coin we'll be using into the texture design. I separated that into a separate layer and this just gives us a lot more flexibility as you'll see when we take all this to play around in Blender. You can get this texture pack with these eight different futuristic looking coin designs on Gumroad for a small price, which you can then slap on whichever logo you want on top of that and use in your projects as you wish. But if you just want to follow along with the tutorial, the free project file on Gumroad has one texture included and you can download that and follow along. So inside this blend file, I already have the lighting set up. So I'm just going to add Shift A, add a mesh circle, and then set the vertices to 256. And this just depends on how much detail you want to be visible in the model of your coin. And I find 256 works well for what I want. So if I go into edit mode, you'll see all those vertices. So I'll just go to the top view, select one of the vertices, and then come to select, checker deselect. And then I'm just going to deselect two of these quadrants. So deselect that and deselect that. And what I'm trying to do is add the detail, uh, those ridges that you see at the edges of uh, the coins. Then I'll hit S and scale this inward just a little bit, something like that. Perfect. And then I'll go into edit mode, select everything, and then extrude upwards. So something like that. And then before we close in that top face of the coin, we want to undo this kind of uh, ridges. So what I'll do is I'll just hit E and scale this inward just a bit. And then to remove this, I'll hit F3 and search uh, to sphere. Then scale that out and that just rounds out those edges back into a perfect circle. So I'll scale that a bit out and then now you can go ahead and extrude inwards and close in that face by hitting F. So there we have half a coin. I'll then go into the modifiers and then add a mirror modifier so that we can fill in the bottom, bottom half of the coin. So I'll hit mirror and then mirror it in the Z axis. And we have that. This is kind of thick, so I'll go into edit mode again and then select those top vertices. Then just bring this down until I have a thickness that I'm happy with. Something like that is perfect. 
Then something else I'll do is I'll add a bevel modifier to just add um, the e so that the edges of the coin can catch the light. Bevel, and then scale this something very, very subtle, like that. So with that, we have we have a coin, and then later on we're going to use the textures that we created to kind of add a bit more detail on the surface of the coin. So to texture our coin, I'll move into the UV editing tab, and from the top view, I'll hit U, then project from view. But to get this to align better with our, our texture, in the viewport, I'll go to view, align view, and center, cursor, and frame all. And if we try that again, project from view, we'll see that that's aligned much, much better. So I'll just scale this up and try to align it as best as possible to the texture that we have here. So now that we have that unwrapped, I will come into the shading tab and then select our coin and add a new material. Then I'll call that uh, coin. And I have the node wrangler add-on enabled. So I'll just select the principal shader and hit control T. And that just saves us a lot of time by add, automatically adding uh, these nodes. So inside this texture, I will add the Ethereum uh, coin texture and see how that looks right there. And then, but if you look on the flip side of the coin, the text is kind of flipped because of the mirror modifier. So what I'll do is go into the mirror modifier and under data, mirror the U, mirror it in the U axis. And that just flips it uh, in the right direction on the other side of the coin. So if you look both on the top side and on the bottom side, the text reads in the proper direction. The next thing I'll do is add the logo of the Ethereum logo on top of the coin. So I'll select the texture and hit Control Shift D so that I can duplicate the texture node with the with the while it's been connected to the mapping. And then inside this second texture, I will add the Ethereum logo, which looks like that. And the black part. Uh, shows that the texture has an alpha, an alpha channel, a transparent channel. So I'll mix this two by adding a color node, a mix RGB, plug that one there, plug that one there, see how that looks. And then I'm going to use the alpha from the texture of the logo and plug that into the factor. That just makes the logo more visible. That looks much better. Another thing I'll do is I'm going to, in the principal shader, I'm going to turn up the metallic to one because your yeah, coins are metallic. And then here's where we can start playing around with uh, the textures. But before that, what I'll do is I'll add a texture, a noise texture, to just add some variation in the roughness of the metallic coin. So I'll go into the texture and add a noise texture, hit control T, and then plug that into the roughness. And you'll see how that looks. There's now some variation in the shininess of the coin. And to see this better, I'm going to enable the layer of the lights and go into the rendered view and see what that looks like. And to fix this kind of weird looking uh, stripes at the edge of the coin, I will plug uh, in the texture coordinates, I'll use the object instead of the generated, and that fixes that. I'll then add some detail here by turning up the detail in the noise texture, and also turning up the roughness in the noise texture. And that just adds a lot more detail on the coin. 
And now this is where we start getting to uh, the fun part. I'm going to start adding some color ramps all over the place. So I'll add a converter color ramp. I'll plug a color ramp right after the texture of the coin. I'll plug another one in the texture of the logo. And then I'll plug another one after combining these two. So that's what that looks like. That's what that looks like. And after combining these two, I'm going to add a third color ramp. And you're going to see how handy this comes in. And this, plug that there. And usually when I use uh, color ramps, I like to use the B-spline because it gives you just a more, a lot more gradual um, gradient in that, in that gradient, a smoother gradient. So now, as you can see, you can start playing around with this gradient in the, from the texture of the coin to just kind of play around with the look of your coin and you have the freedom to tweak uh, the colors of the texture of the coin and the texture of the logo independently. And you can do that. You could even flip this back so that the coin is uh, brighter than the background or flip that back and you have the freedom to play around with the two independently of each other. And you also have the freedom to flip back. Say you want the dark parts to be, the, to be white and this white part to be black. You have that freedom to do that right here inside the texture. And then after combining these two, this third color ramp that plugs into the color, this is where you can now start playing with the actual color of the coin. So let's say you want to have like a golden looking coin. You can select that. I'll set that to almost a brownish color. And set this one to a more golden looking color. And then you can also, again, just as you'd been doing with these two previously, you can start playing around with this to kind of just set the color that you want. And you could also flip those around and play around with that. And you still maintain the independence of playing around with these textures previously. And I think this setup just kind of gives you a flexible way of playing around with the look of, of your coin. And then the last thing I'm going to do to just finish the texturing part, in fact, actually, before I do that, now that we have this texture in place, we can use the texture that we now have to kind of add a bit more detail to the physical model of the coin. I say physical, but yeah, to the actual model of the coin. Then with those edge loops in place, you could go in and add a lot more of them uh, depending on the amount of detail you want to add. So maybe you could add more edge loops for all these details in the textures here, these uh, thin strips. But for the purposes of the tutorial, I think this is enough just to demonstrate. I'm now just going to select this face loop, this, this loop of faces and this loop of faces and that central face. And then I'll just hit Control E and then extrude them along normals so that I can just insert those faces a bit. That just adds a bit more detail to the model and then the edges can catch that light and just make the model pop a lot more. And you can go ahead and just do that for, depending on the texture that you're using, add some more detail to the actual model of the coin. And then the last thing we'll do in the shading tab is just use now the texture to simulate uh, detail, to simulate bumps, to simulate geometry. Um, that difference in height in the geometry of the coin. So I'll take these textures that we've created. So from the combined texture of the coin and the logo, I'll take the output from here. I'll add a node, vector, bump node, and then just take this and plug this into the height and then plug this into the normal of the principal shader. 
and you can see we have that. So I'll just zoom in here and invert that height. And then I'll come here and reduce that strength so that it's not so exaggerated and ugly looking. So you just want something, something like that. So really, really cool. I'm also going to add a color ramp on the noise texture that feeds into the roughness so that we can also play around with this and I like to have it really metallic that way the reflections that um, are cast from the surface of the coin when you add the bloom it really makes it look super super nice and then you can take that bloom pass when you're rendering and do some nice things with it to you know have a very interesting looking render. Then one more thing that you can do also, you can add, let's say, uh, the same way we've used the bump from this output into here. You can also, depending on how old you want the coin to look, the roughness that we've added into the reflections, you can also use that detail and plug that to have, to simulate uh, G, uh, roughness on the surface of the geometry. So. Let's just go ahead and do that. I'll duplicate this bump node and then take this output into the height and then take this normal and plug this right there. So you can see how that, depending on how old or how rough you want that your coin to look. So I'm going to dial this down so that it's not so pronounced, but I also want it to just be visible there, something like that. And maybe that's too much. Dial it down some more, something like that, so that it's very, very subtle, but just makes the surface look a lot. You can almost imagine how it feels when you touch it. So this video is getting a bit longer than I would like. So I'll just split the next part into a separate video. So if you just wanted to see how to create a cool looking uh, coin inside Blender, uh, there you have it, go ahead and have fun. But I will save the next part, which is why I was really excited about creating the textures uh, in a vector editing program like Inkscape. So I'll save that and the announcement for the next part in the next video. So I will see you there.